don't do that. Don't do that. Hang up your clothes. Eat all your food. I can't go back there. Butterfield isn't a school. It's, it's a prison. Uh -huh. I won't go back there. It, it's suffocating. I can't breathe in that awful place. Laura, if you want to go to a different school. Oh, you know what I want. Young lady, do you realize that you're only 16 years old? I'll be 17 next month. All right, 17. But that's still too young to travel to Europe alone. Now, I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you. I'll let you go to Europe the minute you graduate from Butterfield. In fact, I'll not only let you go, I will give you the biggest bon voyage party Stockton has ever seen. Jared Barkley, you know I don't graduate for two years. And that seems like an eternity to you, I know. But believe me, it isn't. Now, Laura, I'm afraid you're just going to have to excuse me. Honestly, Jared, you're just as old-fashioned as father was. It's no wonder he chose you to be my guardian. I am supposed to be at the train station, young lady, to meet the 209 from Sacramento, and I'm late already, so I'm afraid we're going to have to continue this some other time. Well, there's nothing to continue, Jared. I've made up my mind I'm going to Europe, and you can't stop me. And what is it you plan to use for money? <laughs> You're not serious. Your mother's jewelry? My jewelry. You're not going to sell that. Oh, yes, I am. Mother left it to me. It's not part of Father's estate, so you have nothing to say about it. Now, wait a minute, Laura. Laura, you come back here. Laura. Laura. Listen, you know, just calm down and come back to the office. Let me go! Now, now, look, I'll tell you what. You come to dinner tonight, I'll arrange time for a little talk. There, I'm right? not coming to dinner tonight. Tonight I'm going to be on a train to New York to catch a ship for Europe. Yeah. Now, let me go! Oh, Welcome, Your Highness. This is indeed a great honor for my, our humble establishment. I miss Mrs. Owen. Jared! Jared, we missed you at the station. Oh, well, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry, Reverend. Uh, a little matter came up. Well, no matter, here you are. Uh, may I present Your Highness, Jared Barkley. Mr. Barkley? Your Highness? My aide, Captain Crawford. How do you do, sir, Captain? Uh, the Barkleys are hosting a fundraising party at their home on Saturday evening. That's very kind of you, Mr. Barclay. Oh, well, we certainly feel that that's the least we could do. To my people, it is everything, Mr. Barclay. After three years of drought, millions of them are starving. His Highness would be most pleased if you could join us for tea, Mr. Barclay. Oh, well, uh, I would like that very much, Your Highness, but uh, unfortunately, I have an urgent errand to run. So, uh, uh, until this evening? This evening? I've taken the liberty of arranging for you to have dinner at the Barclays. That is, if you have no other plans. Oh, no, we don't. We'll be honored. Until then, Mr. Barclay. Good. Well, if uh, you'll excuse me. Right this way, Your Highness.
Well, it looks like you got trouble, Jane. She's not on that train. I know that. I went through every car. Well, she didn't get on the stage either. What about her friends? Did you check them? Yep. Every one of them said if she's made up her mind to go to Europe, she's going to make it to Europe. Oh, you wait till I get my hands on that little... <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I wonder if she could have ridden out to Fry's Junction to catch that train there. I don't know, but I'll check it out for you. And there's a legend that India itself, with all its beauty and mystery, was enticed from the sea by a musical for sitar. It's beautiful. It's yours, Mrs. Barclay. Oh, no, Your Highness, I couldn't. Please, I want you to have it as a token of my appreciation for your hospitality. Well, uh, all right. On the condition that you will play it for us later. Oh, it'll be my pleasure. Mrs. Barclay? Yes, sir. Dinner is served. Shall we go in? All right, Silas, I'll get it. Oh, good evening, Jared. Oh, I do hope I haven't kept everyone waiting. Well, Laura, how nice you could come, after all. Sounds as though you weren't expecting me. Oh, Jared did say you might not be able to make it. Now, what in the world gave him that idea? Your Highness, may I present Jared's ward, Laura Hayden. Oh, we've met. Oh, Miss Hayden? Well, I'll have Silas at another place. May I, Miss Hayden? Thank you. My country. My apologies for not having something for you, Miss Hayden. Had I known you were going to be here, or uh, wait, perhaps you'll allow me to give you this as a memento, which has been for me at least a very enjoyable evening. Oh, no, I, I couldn't. It's only an imitation. Yes, I'm afraid His Highness has sold virtually all of his jewelry in order to raise money to help alleviate the suffering of his people. Please accept it. Thank you. Well, Your Highness, it is getting late, and we have a busy schedule tomorrow. Yes, I'm afraid we must go. Laura, I'll get the buggy for you. Uh, Jared, no, that won't be necessary. I'm sure Prince Ranjit and Captain uh, Crawford would be glad to drop me by my place on their way into town. Uh, well, of course. <laughs> Good evening, Missy. Wong, this is Prince Ranjit. Oh, yes, I heard much about young Prince. I hope you find your stay bountiful. It will be. May I prepare some refreshment, yes? Thank you, but it's getting kind of late. Oh, tea will only take a few minutes. And you can ask your aide to join us if you like. It's a nice evening. I don't think he'll be uncomfortable waiting outside. You have a beautiful home, Miss Hayden. Do you live here all alone? When I'm not in school. And if you call having a houseman and a cook, a couple of maids, a ranch foreman, and 20 ranch hands around all the time living <laughs> alone. Uh. My mother and father were killed in a railroad accident three years ago. My sympathy, Miss Hayden. Oh, please. Not Miss Hayden. Call me Laura. Only on one condition, that you call me Ranjit. Oh, all right. 
much, Ranjit, I want to do something for your people. I'm going to give you $10,000. $10,000? Mm hmm Laura, that's a great deal of money. Well, I have a great deal of money. But I couldn't let you. Oh, please, Ranjit. You made me accept your ring. Now, I'm going to make you take the money. Good night, Mrs. Owens. Good night, Nina. Oh, Your Highness, I do hope you had a pleasant evening at the Barclays. Very pleasant. Uh, aren't you coming, Captain? Not yet, Your Highness. I thought first perhaps I'd have a little nightcap, if you don't mind. No, not at all. Good night. Good night, Your Highness. Good night. Good night. Harry. I beg your pardon? Harry Davis. Davis? Don't you remember me? Nita Yates, I knew you in San Francisco. You're obviously confusing me with someone else. Oh, but I could have sworn you. Oh, well, maybe I am. Sorry. That's quite all right. Quite all right. <laughs> $10,000? Now, Jared, it's not for me. It's for Ranjit. Ranjit? Well, he asked me to call him that. It's a donation to buy food for his people. Well, you're going to make a donation, aren't you? Yes, but not $10,000. Well, Jared, that's not much. Not when you have as much money as I have. Oh, please say yes. I'll tell you what, young lady. I'll make a little deal with you. Mm. I'll authorize, say, $5,000. And that's on the condition that you promise to go back to school next fall and that I don't hear any more of this nonsense about running off to Europe. Father was very right to pick you, Jared. I give you my word. Uh. All right, I'll authorize a draft for $5,000 and you can donate it at the reception on Saturday. Oh, Jared. <clears throat> I'll go tell Raji right away. You're seeing him today? We're going riding! Oh, thanks, Nina. Well, that sure looks good. By the way, how have you been? Oh, fine. How have you been? Oh, I can't complain. I hear there's going to be quite a shindig up at your place Saturday night for this Prince Ranjit Singh. Yeah, yeah. Hey, by the way, you want to come? Oh, what are you talking about? I'd be a fish out of water rubbing elbows with those people you're going to have. Oh, you know better than that. Something bothering you, Nina? Um, I don't know. Maybe it's nothing, but... But what? Look, you've been real good to me since I hit town. Your whole family has. I told you I'd never forget it, and I haven't. So? There's something you ought to know before that party. Last night, I saw... Nita! Nita! I'm having the cook prepare a special supper for the prince. You go to the store and buy 10 cents worth of curry right away. The cook is waiting. Yes, Mrs. Owens. Do hurry. Heath, can you meet me at my place after I get off work tonight? Sure, if it's important. It is. <laughs> This is my favorite spot on the whole ranch. You must have many beautiful places to choose from. You must be owning most of the state. <laughs> oh, no. Only 5,000 acres. Rajit, I have good news for you. Huh? I talked to Jared this morning about the money, and, well, he agreed to $5,000. But he's going to give me a bank draft, and I can give it to you Saturday. Something wrong? No, except, well, I don't know how I can show my appreciation. But when I return home to Amritsar, I shall tell everyone of your kindness. Amritsar, that's the city of the Golden Temple on the banks of the Indus. I read all about it in my geography book last night. 
Must be a beautiful place. Yes, it is. I wish I could show it to you someday. Perhaps someday you will. Fool you after all, did I? No. <laughs> well, I didn't think I did. You know, I uh, I debated bluffing it through, but I decided it might be wiser to come and talk to you. What do you want? The question is, what do you want? Nothing from you. Oh, now come on. That isn't the Nita I knew in San Francisco. Come on, what is it? <laughs> what is it? Sir? People change. Lita, I'm real glad to hear you say that. Real glad. Because I've changed, too. Then why are you pretending to be someone named Captain Crawford? Listen, I'm going straight, Nita. I have been ever since I saw you last. I shipped out to India. It took me ten years to become the captain of my own ship. I've changed, Nita, more than my name. I'm, I'm not Harry Davis anymore in any way. But Harry Davis is still wanted for murder in San Francisco. That hasn't changed. Nita. Nita, please. Please, don't mess me up with... with the Prince. I, my job as his aide is very important to me. I'll bet it is. He's here to raise money, and the more money he raises, the more you can steal from him. And if you steal from him, it's the same thing as stealing from people who gave me a hand when I needed help. People who didn't care who I was or what I'd been. Now, get out! You're gonna tell your friends about me? Yes. Ten years of my life, Nita. Washed out. Just... Just like that. I've heard your soft soap before, too, Harry. Now get out! society, but she sure didn't deserve this. Now, what are you doing here anyway? Well, I had lunch at the hotel. She said there was something she wanted me to know about before the reception Mother's given Saturday night. She say what it was? No. How about the man you saw running away from here? Any idea who he is? Well? No.
Well, Your Highness, this is an unexpected pleasure. Come in. Thank you. Please sit down. Mr. Barclay, my visit concerns Laura. Yes. Mr. Barclay, I would like to ask your permission, as Laura's guardian, to ask her to become my wife. Your wife? Yes. Well, you realize, Your Highness, that Laura is still a child. She's 16, same age as I. You're both still children. Mr. Barclay, perhaps in this country, you can afford to prolong the childhood of your young. But that's a luxury in which we cannot indulge in India. Your Highness. So please understand when I say I consider myself as much a man at 16 as you are at your age. I assumed my father's throne when I was 14. Whatever childhood I had left ended there, I assure you. I am responsible for the welfare of 10 million people in Punjab, Mr. Barclay. And I feel that entitles me to take my place as a man. Very well, Your Highness. I'm willing to concede that you were mature beyond your years. But I'm afraid Laura isn't. She's still very young and extremely impressionable. You think she's in love with me because I am a prince? Yes, I do. So I'm afraid I can't give Laura my permission to marry you. If for no other reason, her father's will stipulates that she forfeit his estate if she should marry before she's 21. What if she's willing to do that? I would hope you wouldn't let her. I can't promise that, Mr. Barclay. Good day. Oh, there you are. We're having lunch with Reverend Hamilton. He's invited some of his minister friends from around Stockton to meet you. I, uh, saw you going into Jared Barclay's office. What were you doing there? Oh, I wanted to talk to him. So? What about? I asked you, what about? Oh, about Laura Hayden. Laura Hayden? What about her? Oh, I asked Mr. Barclay for permission to marry her. You what? You must be out of your mind. She's in love with me. Are you in love with her? No. <laughs> Just interested in her money, huh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. You're lying. You are in love with her. No. Stop it. You're not fooling me. Sure, I've seen the way you've looked at her. You're gone on her. What if I am? What's the matter with you? You started believing that you're really Prince Ranjit Singh? No. Well, what were you thinking of? What did you think you would do after you married that girl? Take her back to that hole I pulled you out of in Amristar? Oh, maybe you thought that you would settle down here in Stockton, huh? And go on making people believe that you were a prince. I don't know. You don't know. Well, now you know. So you just forget it. After the Barclays party, we take the money and we move on. Do you understand? Well? No. What? I can't do it. Listen, what in the world has gotten into you? These people are practically begging for us to take their money and all of a sudden... It's not all of a sudden. I've been wanting to quit for a long time. Well, I didn't know that. Oh, boy. You should have told me. I was going to tell you after the last job. And then you came out with this Prince Ranjit idea. Well, I thought I could do it. You can. Yes, boy, you can. Oh, look. I know how you feel. I was ready to call it quits myself. Until I hit on this idea, then I realized we could pull out winners. 
You know, this isn't like the nickel and dime stuff we've been working before, boy. This is big. This is big. We can pull thirty to 40,000 out of this town. <laughs> and come to think of it, the Hayseeds will think we're doing them a favor. Sure, we're letting them think they're doing something for a suffering humanity. <laughs> it eases their conscience. They feel good, we feel good, everybody's happy, huh? <laughs> Come on, boy. Just a few more days and... And you'll have another idea. And we'll go on the way we have for eight years. I want to quit now. You'll do as you're told. Is that clear? Yes. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Finish addressing these invitations later if you'd like. No, we'd better finish them now. Are you sure Jared's going to be home for lunch? Well, that's what he said when he left here this morning. Why? Just something special you wanted to see him about? No, I was just wondering. Isn't it warm today? I hadn't noticed. Perhaps you'd like a nice glass of iced tea, hmm? Thank you. Laura? In here. Ah, there you are. You stopped by your house. Wong said you'd be here. Did Ranji talk to you? He did. And you said no, didn't you? How did you guess? Oh, I knew you would. I told Ranji, I told Ranji, it's no use even asking you. Now you listen to me. You are not in love with him. You haven't got the slightest idea what love is all about. Oh, if you're going to give me that you're just a child speech, you can save your breath. You know, I don't have to have your permission to marry Ranjit. That's right. But may I remind you, your father's will provides that if you marry before you're 21, you forfeit his estate. He had no right to put that in his will. He did it for your protection. I must say I give him credit. He obviously knew you a lot better than I thought he did. Jerry, please. I do love Ranji. I really do. I know I'm young. Laura. Laura, I doubt very much whether youth makes much difference in your case. What do you mean? I mean, I wonder if you'll ever really know anything about love. I wonder if anyone as selfish as you are ever could, no matter how old she gets. Selfish? I had to beg you to let me give Ranjit $5,000, and you call me selfish. That's right. Laura, you want to give him that money to impress him. The fact that it might feed a lot of hungry people doesn't mean a thing to you. I hate you. <laughs> Laura! Laura! Let her go, Jared. Let her go. She'll cry it out. But I can't tell what she might do. Well, there's nothing you can do to prevent it, unless, of course, you'd like to lock her in her room until she's 21. Well, I suppose you're right. I tell you, I don't know what's going to happen to that girl. Same thing that happens with all children. They grow up. Yes, but in the meantime... In the meantime, you do the best you can. Not necessarily. I could ask Judge Hartman to appoint somebody else. No, no, Jared, that you cannot do. I didn't ask for the but job. But you didn't refuse it. Now, Jared, you're Laura's father, or the closest thing there is to one. And being a parent is one responsibility you can't walk away from. Come on, let's have some lunch. You'll feel better. Laura, I can't let you give up your father's estate. But I want to give it up. Oh, Rajit, we could go to San Francisco. I could sell my jewelry there. Jewelry? Mm-hmm. Well, it's worth a lot of money. Almost $20,000. I could go home and... No. But why? Laura, it's such a big step for you. I want you to be sure. I am sure. Think about it. I can leave Stockton before Barclay's party. We can decide after Saturday night. All right. Okay. You gotta go. 
Miss Hayden. Well, how nice to see you again. Thank you. Laura was just leaving. Oh, must you go? Yes. It was nice seeing you again, Captain Crawford. Thank you. Bye-bye. Laura just stopped by to... I know why she stopped by. So, Miss Hayden has $20,000 worth of jewelry at home, huh? She's giving us $5,000 Saturday night. Isn't that enough? Well, what's the matter with you? I know what you're thinking. You might as well forget it. All right, boy. It's forgotten. You busy? No, especially. Go right in. If you got a minute, I'd like to talk to you. Sure. What about? Well, about last night. You know, I told the sheriff I didn't have any idea who the man I saw running away from Nita's place was. Well, that was the truth, wasn't it? Well, it was and it wasn't. When I saw that man running away, I... Well, for a minute, I thought it was... the prince's aide. Crawford? possible connection could there be between Crawford and Nita? I don't know. That's why I didn't say anything to the sheriff. Or to you. Because if it turned out that I was wrong, well, it could be pretty embarrassing for everybody. You're right, it would be. When we get right down to it, we don't really know anything about Mr. Crawford, except for what Reverend Hamilton's told us. How much does he know? Not that much, really. He and Crawford exchanged a couple of letters when he found out from a medical missionary in India that Crawford and the Prince were coming to this country on a fundraising tour, that's all. That sounds legitimate enough, I guess. But I still can't get it out of my head that it was Crawford. I don't see that you have much choice, Heath. You'll have to go to the sheriff. If there's anything wrong with Mr. Crawford, we'd better find it out right now before this town hands a lot of money over to the Prince. Captain Crawford, I'm Sheriff Madden. Won't you come in, Sheriff? Okay. His Highness is resting at the moment, but I'll be glad to tell him you're here. No, Captain, it's you I came to see. Oh. Well, won't you sit down? Thank you. What, um, what is it I can do for you, Sheriff? Well, now, this may be a little bit awkward, but, uh, I'd like to ask you about last night. What about last night? A woman named uh, Nita Yates worked here as a waitress in the hotel. Was found murdered. Oh, yes. Yes, I heard. What about it? Well, someone saw a man running away from Nita's house shortly after the murder, and uh, he thinks it was you. What? What is this, Sheriff? Some kind of a joke? Very well be, but I'd still have to ask you some questions. You understand that? Of course. Of course, Sheriff. What is it you want to know? How long have you been the Prince's aide? About ten years now. Before that, you were captain of a steamer. That's right. Star of India. Yeah, I know the ship well. Used to put into San Francisco. Not while I was captain, Sheriff. We only sailed from Southampton to Bombay. Now, may I ask what it is you're getting at? Nita Yates was from San Francisco, and at one point or another, she probably worked every saloon on the waterfront. I see. And you're wondering if I might have known her there? Uh-huh. Well, the answer, Sheriff, is no. I did not know her in San Francisco because I was never in that city until the Prince and I arrived there from Calcutta to start this tour. Well, I didn't think there was an American seaman alive who hadn't put into San Francisco at one point or another. Sheriff, are you calling me a liar? 
No, Captain, I'm merely suggesting that... I said I would cooperate, but I'm not going to submit to a cross-examination in which my honesty is obviously in question. You know, if the Prince knew about this... Oh, he could make trouble for me. Is that what you were going to say? He could, Sheriff. He could indeed. A great deal of trouble. Now, I'm... I'm willing to drop this right here. Because the whole thing is just... is just too preposterous to discuss any further. All right, Captain. Sorry I bothered you. Just one thing I'm curious about. What's that? Why haven't you asked about the man who thinks he saw you last night? Why should I? Oh, no reason. Unless you just don't care, or you already know. I heard you talking to someone. Well, it looks as if you're going to get your wish after all. My wish? You're going to have to leave the lambs in this town unshorn. What? That was the sheriff I was talking to. What did he want? I, uh, I suppose you've heard that a woman was murdered in town here last night. What about her? I knew her. In San Francisco, ten years ago. She saw me in the lobby night before last. She recognized me. And you killed her? Well, she didn't leave me any choice. Heath Barkley saw me running from the house. That's what the sheriff wanted to talk to me about. You killed a woman just... Don't you turn your back on me. Not after all I've done for you. Have you forgotten who you were and what you were when I picked you up? Why, you'd never eaten anything but slop. You'd never even slept in a bed. Where do you think you'd be now if I hadn't taken you in? Dead. That's right. And don't you forget it. Now, that... Jewelry that Laura Hayden was talking about. We're going to need it for traveling money. No. Shut up. I can't do it. Shut up and listen to me. I want Laura Hayden's jewelry. And you're going to help me get it. Because if you don't, and I'm arrested for Nita Yates' murder, I'm going to make sure you're sitting in that cell right next to me, waiting for the rope right along with me. Do I make myself clear? Maybe speak to you, Laura. Well, of course. Come in. I I told Captain Crawford why you came to the hotel this afternoon. Oh. Yes, yes, Miss Hayden. It's a great sacrifice you'll be making, giving up all this. But obviously, that's that's what you want. So I'm willing to help you and the Prince. Well, help us how? I know a ship in San Francisco that's sailing for Calcutta tomorrow. Tomorrow? If you leave now, you and the Prince can be on it before Mr. Barclay can make a move to stop you. But what about the party at the Barclay Saturday night? Uh, Laura, if we're going to get married, we have to leave now. And give up the money you need to buy food for... Miss Hayden, the Prince has just received an urgent message from Armiser, which demands that he leave for home immediately. No, I don't believe you. Laura, you wouldn't Laura, I'll without... explain it all later. Well, explain it now. Uh, Miss Hayden, there just isn't time. Now, where is the jewelry you told Ranjit about? The jewel. No! Give me that jewelry, Miss Hayden. Ranjit! Laura, give it to him. Give me that jewelry. Oh. Laura. <laughs> Laura, are you all right? Oh, stay away from me. Here, take this. <laughs> <laughs> 
What are you doing? Just making sure that she doesn't run the sheriff right away. I am taking her with us. Come on. I think our best chance to pick up their trail from here is to split up. Yeah, I think you're right. We'll meet at gun sight. <laughs> All right, we're going to stop here a few minutes and rest the horses. but an, an animal. Maybe you're right, Laura. That's what I was when Crawford found me in streets of Amrasa. Just an animal, fighting all the other animals for enough garbage to keep from starving. Crawford wanted a boy to use in a confidence game he was working. And I was lucky he picked me. He fed me, bought me decent clothes, even sent me to school, run by some British missionaries. In return, I helped him steal. But I wasn't hungry anymore. I was nearly 10 years old, and first time in my life I wasn't hungry. I can't forget that, Laura. I want to, but I can't. You could if you really wanted to. You could if... If you were half the person you pretended to be, the person that I fell in love with. You fell in love with Prince Ranjit Singh. No. I know that's what you believe. You and, and Jared, everybody else. But it wasn't true. It just wasn't true.
said, let's go. You heard me. I can't leave a man out there to die. You take the jewelry and go on. Laura and I are going to stay here. So this is the thanks I get, huh? I have to stop thanking you sometime. I'm not going. All right. All right, I don't care what you do. Go back to Armour Star. Start with the rest of your people. That girl's going with me. I need her for a hostage. She's staying. Look, boy, I don't want to hurt you, but I will. You're going to have to. No, no, Rajit. I'm going with him. Goodbye, you little fool. Nobody. Nobody, Mr. Barclay. What's your name? Jahan. Just Jahan. Oh, you're wrong, Jahan. It's Prince Ranjit Singh who was nobody. discussed it, and he agreed it was the best thing to do. Well, I'm not going to let him. I'm going to get him a lawyer who will really defend him. Ah, uh, well, just remember, young lady, lawyers cost money. But I'm forgetting, aren't I, that you always have your mother's jewelry. That's right, <laughs> and I can use it. Oh, Jared, how can you do this? How can you send Jahan to prison without a fight after he saved your life? Or does it uh, say somewhere in there that he's going to prison? But he will if he pleads guilty. Maybe. And maybe he'll be released on probation if someone will assume responsibility for him. And somebody has. Jan! Why aren't you in jail? Because the district attorney and the judge and I had a little conference and agreed that he should be released. Into my custody. He's uh, going to be working for us for a while. Quite a while, I'd say. <laughs> Really? And I imagine Nick and Heath can make a pretty good ranch hand out of him by the time you get back from school next summer. School? School. Well, Jarrett, I've been meaning to have another little talk with you about that. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Jahan? 
It's cool, Laura. you'd like to go. No thanks, I'll hold on to these. Sorry, I figured I could help. Help? What are you doing? Why are you following me? Following you? I, I wasn't following you. It's just that, well, you're way out here away from town. I, I, I thought you were lost. No, no, that wasn't it either. It's just that I, I never saw anyone quite so beautiful. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You better let me. Look, I'm only going right down to that house, so just let me be. Well, I can at least... You heard her, mister. You turn around right off the way you come. Get off my land. Ah, well, you must be Mr. Grant. I'm Nick Barker. I don't care who you are, and I told you to go. Look, mister, I, I was just trying to help your daughter. She don't need no help. I, you heard me, mister. Now, I don't want to have to use this. Well, you better not try using that. Because I got a right to be here. 
case you've forgotten, Mr. Grant, this is Barclay property. When I paid my rent money, that made it my land for the time. I don't have to suffer nobody, Barclays included. You go on now, leave us our privacy. But I... I told you to go. Yeah, I'd uh, say you made that pretty plain. Poisonous well. Thank you, Silas. Oh, Silas! Oh. Don't you like your coffee hot, Mr. Nick? Drink some water, drink some water. It's your trouble, Nick. You just jump right in before you know the temperature. Well, he could have told me. Well, I was talking about that girl. You know, if I was her father, I might have got a little heated up, too. All right, Heath. Jared, you rented the place to him. What sort of a man is he? Just a farmer. He didn't really say very much. I didn't know he had a wife or a daughter old enough to interest Nick. Anyway, I just didn't ask him too many questions after he paid a half a year's rent in advance. Well, that's strange, isn't it? For that kind of money, he could have bought a place instead of renting it. Well, maybe he figured he couldn't get credit to finance the rest or just had cash on hand. Anyway, Nick, you realize that legally you invaded the man's privacy. Well, still, the shooting was uncalled for. Well, I have to go out there and check on a couple of things, so I'll speak to him about it. Oh, well, I'll go with you. No, no, it's huh? not necessary, Nick. I can handle it all alone. Oh, well, excuse me. But you know, it's strange that uh, Jerry didn't find out more about those people before he rented to them. Well, he never mentioned them at all. And that's even stranger. Oh, looky here. It's our tenants, the Grants. Yeah, they're right back. Nick, wait. No, 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 they can't be paying rent on the town street. I guess I can talk to her here. You know, Jared's waiting. We're 40 minutes late already. Here will wait. Good morning, miss. I, uh, just thought maybe I'd check, see how your ankle's doing. It's just fine, thank you. Good, good. Well, Mrs. Grant, my mother's looking forward to meeting you. Maybe she could drop by and pay you a visit. No, please. Uh, you understand my husband doesn't like company. I'm sorry. But please thank her just the same. Oh, I see. Well, my uh, mother's going to be terribly disappointed. Maybe uh, you could drop by and pay her. Uh, I think not. Good day, Mr. Barclay. How'd you like that? You asked for it. I sure did. Hey, Nick, that wheel for your carriage is ready. I'll pick it up tomorrow morning, Debbie. Am your new tenants out the Northwoods farm? Uh, that's right. Maybe I'll just drum up a little business. What's the name? Uh, Grant. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. This ought to be good. Howdy there, Mr. Grant. Ladies. Name's Denby, Arthur W. Denby. Blacksmith, wheelwright, carter. Keep your cutlery sharp, make you the best plowshare in the valley. Ain't that right, Mr. Clay? That's right. I got no need of those services. No telling when you might, though, is there? 
I'm a farrier, too. Take good care of your horse's hooves. Do all your shoeing. Do my own shoeing. Looks it, too. Better try me. <laughs> <laughs> that was only a joke, friend. Here, have a stove. I never touch the things. Hebron. Uh, you don't have to be unfriendly about it. But he gave you leave to talk to us. Well, pardon me, mister. I was only trying to be neighborly. Well, what do you make of that? Just what I expected. What got into him? Just plain cussedness, I'd say. Some tenant you got. What was that name she called him? Huh? Oh, oh, Herman. Yeah, Herman. I think it was Hebron. Yeah, Hebron. Hebron, that's what I thought. Over in Utah. Common name of them Mormons. Mormons? Say, you don't think Grant did. Why not? You Barclays know anything about them, where they come from? And he don't smoke, never touches the thing. That's their way. And how about tea and coffee? How much does he buy? Come to think of it, none. Not a pound since they've been here. Of course not. They're Mormons, and that explains a lot. Yeah, it, it might have that. And they're here, in our valley. And why not? I'll tell you why not. Because they're no good, none of them. They call themselves saints, but they're more like devils. Oh, now, come on. You can't dislike a man just because of his religion. It ain't got nothing to do with religion. How come they've been driven out of every place they've ever been, way out in the wilderness to set up their own state? Now, what are they doing here? Grant's not bothering you. Yes, he is just by being here. I'm telling you, no telling what's going to happen. Those people are murdering heathens. Oh, well, now, that's stupid. Is it? Yes. Did you ever hear of the Mountain Meadows Massacre? Of course, everybody's heard of that. They say the Indians did the actual killing. They say, but Mormons egged them on, Mormons bossed them, and Mormons probably helped them too. A whole wagon train full of peaceful, helpless settlers murdered in cold blood. And I had an uncle and two cousins on that train. So you can see, I got no use for Mormons. It makes me sick to see him in this valley. And you, Barclays, rented him a farm. What's the matter with Denby? He doesn't like Mormons. Our people had rent to him. He seems to think that the Grants are Mormons. Well, he's right, they are. You knew they were? No, I guessed it. And you forgot to mention it. Well, I didn't think it was very important. After all, a man's religion's his own business, isn't it? Well, now, Jared, that has nothing to do with it. It can just cause an awful lot of trouble around here, is all. Well, Grant doesn't strike me as the type who's going to stir up trouble. Well, now, he was pretty handy with a gun. Well, Dinby is the type. Yeah, his type is always the problem. Well, he isn't about to forget this none too soon. Can you meet me back here a little later? Well, I thought you wanted to sign those papers. Well, I do, but I have to take care of something first. See you here about three? All right, fine. Come on, I'll let you buy me a beer. your visitors? We don't have no visitors. No one, none. Well, now, I'm not exactly a visitor, am I? I stop by as your landlord, see if there's anything you need. How's that pump? It's all fixed. There's no need to look. How about the roof on the shed? Need any more shingles? Mr. Barkley, I paid you your money, and I don't need no help. Now, I appreciate your interest, but we like our privacy. Is that the way all Mormons feel? How'd you know that? It wasn't really very hard to guess, Mr. Grant. 
I think maybe I've guessed a couple of other things, too. Might be wise for you and me to have a little talk. Put that thing away. Come in. You're welcome, Mr. Barclay. Mrs. Grant. And this is your daughter? Emelina. Miss Emelina? I could quick make up some lemonade. Say no social call. You had something on your mind. As a matter of fact, I do. I think it'd be a good idea if we got to know a little bit more about each other. For instance? For instance, why you came here. Why not? It's good farming country, ain't it? There aren't any other Mormons here, Mr. Grant. You ain't interested in why I come here. You're only interested in how quick you can get us away. Well, I paid my money and I ain't leaving. Now, nobody said anything about leaving. Well, I'm saying it. I want you out of here. Leave us alone. I'm interested in why you left Utah to come here and hide out on this farm. Why you don't want any visitors, no contact from anybody. Now, there has to be a reason for that. What reason would I have to hide out? I think it's the same reason that most Mormons are hiding out now. Going out onto the desert, some to Canada, some to Mexico. And most, I'm afraid, to jail eventually. I don't know what you're driving at. I'm talking about the Mormons who refuse to obey the new law. Who refuse to give up their plural wives. Semolina isn't your daughter. No, she's my sister. And I don't believe that either. She's your second wife, isn't that right? Can't prove that. Is this your Bible? Can you leave that be. I usually contain records. Hebron Jethers Grant, married June 12th, 1872, to Eliza May Goodhue. Married May 30th, 1878, to Mary Emelina Hewitt. <laughs> Did you have to know? It's nothing to you. I'm afraid it is. If only as your landlord. People already know you're Mormons. Unfortunately, that could bring trouble enough. But when they find out about this... You don't want any trouble? No more than you. Well, you could just forget it. You could forget your... I can't do that, Mr. Grant. Now, the laws against bigamy in California are explicit. If I let you go on living here and breaking the law, I'll become an accessory to the crime. I'm simply trying to tell you that you can't live in this house under the circumstances. You can't run me out. I won't leave. I paid. I'll give you your money back. I don't care. I don't want it. I won't leave. There's no solution for you here. Can't you see that? You can go on breaking the law, but sooner or later it's going to catch up with you. If you don't do something about it, believe me, there are plenty of people who will. Now, what am I to do? I can't answer that. I can only tell you the consequences of doing nothing. It's your problem, your decision. You'll have to make it soon. I can't give you much more time. Four times, four times I had to run. As a boy, my folks burned out in Missouri, and again in Illinois, my paw dead. I turned out of Zion itself by my own people. Sent to wander homeless in the wilderness, bereft of God. And then again in Arizona, and now here. You know what that's like? I can imagine. But you cannot live in California with two wives. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Give up one of them? Now, you tell me, Mr. Lawyer, which one? Now, which one of these faithful women am I supposed to give up and turn out penniless and helpless into the world? Did it ever occur to you and your lawmakers that I might love my wives, both of them equally, and they might love me? Did it ever occur to you that, that these women might be happy in this house, that these marriages are made in heaven? and sanctified in the temple of the Lord. This is a house of love and peace and blessed harmony, a house of God. I'm tired, lawyer. I'm tired of being spat on, reviled, and called every obscene name because of what I believe, because of the way I worship my God. I'm tired of having my marriage defiled and my wives' names sullied and treated like the filth of the earth. I've had enough of it, and I won't take any more of it, and I won't run away from it. I believe what I've done is right. And good and righteous in the name of the Lord, and I will be judged by him and by no other. Not by you, not by anybody in this valley, not by anybody else. Get out, Mormon. We don't want you here. Get out of our valley. I'll kill him, nigga. No right to do that. Give me that rifle. Don't be a fool, man. Give it to me. You let me take care of this. Ah. 
Now, Denby, you be smart. Ride off and leave these people alone. What are you doing here, Jared? This ain't your fight. I'm making it mine. Well, I ain't got nothing against you. We've been friends a long time. You're not being very friendly at the moment. Well, it ain't you. I mean, I don't blame you for renting to him. He probably fooled you, too. But we're not going to have any Mormons around here. Who's we? All of us and a lot more, too. Now, I don't want no trouble with you, Jared, but we're not going to run from it, neither. We mean to turn them out. So maybe uh, you better do it first. And if I don't? Then we will. And folks might blame you for bringing them here, and you might not like what they do. It might not just be a busted window. Now, you listen carefully. Ride out and don't come back. If you do, there'll be a warrant for your arrest. You're gonna regret this, Jared. There's your answer, Mr. Grant. I mean to fight. You lose. Maybe not. You haven't got a leg to stand on, legally or otherwise. Now, what else can I do? You can go to Mexico. Nobody will bother you there. Run again? Well, then there's only one other answer, isn't there? No. Never. Mr. Barkley? Mrs. Grant? I'll tend the supper. Hebron, what Mr. Barkley says might not be right. About what? There's probably no other answer for us but to do like the others. Go to Mexico. You want that? You want me to go to a foreign nation where I don't even speak their tongue? How am I going to earn a living for us? Find a farm like this one? No, we ain't come to that yet. God willing, we never will. We ain't done fighting here yet, Em. What is fighting the answer? Won't they just hate us the harder? Well, is running away to a foreign nation the answer? This is my country, Emmalina, just as much as it is the Barclays. I was born here, and I mean to die here. I'm an American. I'm not a Mexican. But we can't stay here. Now, Em, you stop. you fretting. You trust Hebron like you always done. I took care of you till now, didn't I? Yes, Hebron. And I always will. I ain't gonna desert you, neither one of you. So don't you worry. The Lord's gonna take care of us. And provide like you always done. trip out to the Grants. What'd you find out? Found out your taste is improving, for one thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're not running in luck, Nick. Huh? How's that? The lady's already married. Huh? The young one? The name's Emmalina, and she's Mrs. Grant. Oh, what about the other one? She's Mrs. Grant, too. Sign here, here, and here. Of course, Mormon. Oh, well, that explains why I didn't want anyone around. Yep. So? What'd you say to him? Told him I'd give him a little time to decide what to do. Uh, meanwhile, you keep all this to yourself. Isn't that what you call being an accomplice, Brother Jared? It is. So what am I supposed to do? Run down the middle of town, tell Denby, tell the sheriff, have him arrest him, throw him in jail? What good would that do those two women? 
Well, now, that is his problem, isn't it? I mean, a man isn't supposed to be married to two women at the same time. What if he loves them both equally, Nick? Well, I doubt that. Says he does. Well, he can just give up one of them. What if they both love him? Look, the man is old enough to be Emelina's father. Now, she'd be better off without him. Sounds like a little wishful thinking. Well, I'll tell you what is wishful thinking. If this little problem goes any further, it's all gonna blow up in our face. Well, Nick, I told him I was gonna give him a little time, and that's what I'm gonna do. Whoa. Evening, storekeeper. We need some supplies, some flour, lard, and some cartridges. Came too late. Already closed. But we drove all the way in here. Can't help it. Ought to take the decent time of day. I don't know why a body'd wait till so late. Unless they was afraid they were going to be seen by somebody. Now, look. You'd open up again for some other man, wouldn't you? I might, and I might not. Well, my money's good as anybody else's. Please, Mr. Clay. I'd like to oblige for your sake, Mrs. Grant, but I... Now, you deal with me. I'll take my trade somewhere else next time. I'd just as soon you did. Where'll you go? Not everybody will deal with you. You... You know what you are? Hebron! A swine, a filthy swine. Now, you get in that... Get your stinking hands off of me! You... Mormon. Oh, Hebron. Oh. Look what you've done to my husband! Husband? You? You too? Both of you? <laughs> well, I'll be... <laughs> oh, Emelina. Living in sin right in our midst. Not to mention him flouting the law. If he's got two wives now, he'll be looking for more. No decent folks in the valley will be safe. Well, what about it, Jared? You're the one man in town who knows anything at all about the Grants. Is it true or isn't it? Yes, it's true, Fred. He's married to both of them. You just never got around to telling me. Well, I didn't know for sure myself until yesterday, and I felt I had to give the man a little time to make his decision. You had no right to do that, Jarrett. I know I didn't. I was hoping maybe we could solve this thing without anyone getting hurt. What are you going to do now? Only thing I can do. Arrest him. You mean a long sentence, Fred. Courts have been awful tough on these cases. Yeah, I know. Leave those two women alone, nobody to support them. Well, that's not my problem, and I might add it's not yours either. I don't know, Fred. Maybe it is. When a law works this kind of hardship on people. Jared, you're a lawyer. You know every law works a hardship on somebody. But that fact in itself isn't enough to keep us from doing the jobs we have to do. I know, but can it really hurt Fred to give the man just a little more time? A little more time? That law was passed two years ago. And Grant married his second wife two years before that. That law is retroactive. It penalizes people for doing something that wasn't a crime when they did it. Stands up in court. I'm talking about justice, Fred. How we enforce this law is the measure of our humanity. You, uh, been over at the saloon and heard Denby? Yeah. Time's running out, Jarrett. And it may be that I won't be able to give him time. So you tell him to hurry up. I'll go out and see him this afternoon. Thanks, Fred. Still working on the shed? Yes. It's coming along fine, isn't it? 
Why? Such a nice farm. The best we've ever had. Hebron likes it here. Well, they'll drive us out again, Eliza. Mr. Barclay says so. Please, sister, don't talk about it. It upsets me so. But, Eliza, you can't just ignore it. I leave such things to Hebron. So should you. He'll know what to do, and God will provide. Hebron can be wrong. Of course, dear. But God can't. Eliza, what if there were just one of us? Now, sister, you know I don't like to talk of death. No, not death. I'm talking about the Lord. It says that we both shouldn't be living with Hebron. That's a bad law, and I don't talk about such things. I don't even think about them. Hebron will know what to do. Yes. You've always had Hebron or someone to look after things for you, haven't you? I've been very fortunate, Emmalina. Well, I haven't. I've had to look out for myself. He would get along fine with just one of us. And there wouldn't be any more trouble from the law or anyone else. Sister, I don't understand you. You shouldn't even think about such things. We're here, the three of us, and happy. Oh, Eliza, I'm sorry. I won't talk about it anymore. I'm going out for a while. All right, dear, don't be long. Well, it's about time we met, Mrs. Grant. You're so kind. And I wasn't even sure you'd receive me. Why not? I admire your devotion to what you believe is right. Well, that's just it, Mrs. Barclay. I'm not so sure what is right anymore. Oh, I don't mean my religion. I mean the plural marriage. And it's not that I'm unhappy, I'm not. It's just that since they passed this law, I understand. Well, Hebron says that there's a higher law that we must obey. But if they send him to prison, I think it would kill him. And I don't think the Lord would ask that. Have you talked this over with your husband? Oh, yes. But Hebron is a steadfast man. And when he's sure in what he believes, well, it's very difficult to change his mind. I've talked about Mexico a lot. But he doesn't want to go. It might be for the best. I know. But I can't force him. And... Uh, I think there may be another way that would be better. What other way? Well, I've thought and thought about it. And that's why I've come to see your son. He's a lawyer. And he could advise me about, well, the divorce. For you? Well, Hebron could get along with just one of us. And Eliza's been with him longer. Besides, she needs someone. I don't. I, I can manage by myself. And one of the reasons Hebron married me was so that I could give him children when Eliza hadn't given him any. But I haven't either. Well, what about your feelings? I'd rather know that he were free than, than in jail. Mrs. Grant, you must be very sure about this. Do you think your son can handle it?
You can ask him yourself. Mother, it's nice to see you, Mrs. Grant. Mrs. Grant would like to ask you something. Oh? What can I do for you? Mr. Barclay, will you get me a divorce? You were right. We can't go on together. You're doing the wisest thing possible, Mrs. Grant. Does your husband know? Well, he has to be told, of course. I'll tell him as soon as Knowing I... Knowing your husband, I think it'd be better if I approach him first. She can stay here till I get back. Don't you worry, everything will be all right. I don't believe you. What have you done to her? Turn her against me, you... Now, calm down, Grant. You've got to see this thing the way it really is. You're the one who's forced her into this, and you know it. What do you mean? I mean you can't go on breaking the law or fighting it. She sees that even if you don't. No. I won't let her. She can't do it. I'm afraid it's out of your hands. I won't let her! I'll bring her back if I have to kill all now, you Now, wait a <laughs> I come for my wife. Yes, we have been expecting you. Didn't you? And I'll use this if I have to. Well, when are you going to stop playing hero? And when are you going to get through that thick head of yours that you're not going to fight the world all by yourself? Huh? Now, why don't you put that thing down right there? And as soon as you decide to start acting like a gentleman, then you will be fully welcome into our home. How's that? There now, isn't that better? Where's Jared? You never mind that. Where's my wife? What'd you do with her? Oh, we haven't done anything with well, you. You turned her against her unlawful husband. You, I've seen you cast an eyes at her from the first day. Now, you're not making much sense, Mr. Grant. Your wife makes a great deal more. Now, you can't tell me my wife would decide to go away from me all by herself without being pushed into it. Then I'll tell you. It's true. I believe you. I'm not going to let you take my wife away from me. I'll fight you. I'll fight the whole country if I have to. Oh, no, that's all. And I'll have the Lord on my side. No, Hebron, you don't. I don't think the Lord has taken sides in this. Anyway, I don't want you to fight. You don't mean you really want to leave me? No, not want to, Hebron. Have to, don't you see? No, no, I don't. No, you don't, Emily. Now, listen, we'll go to Mexico just like you want. Uh. You don't really mean that. Yes, I do. I always meant to. Only now we'll leave right away. Tonight. Tomorrow. You'll never be happy there. Yes, I will. Only... Am you going to come back to me? I can't do without you. I love you. Do you really promise about going to Mexico? I promise. <laughs> and there'll be no more fight. No, I'll never use that gun for nothing but squirrels. I'm mighty glad to hear that. Oh, Mr. Barclay. I'm, I'm truly sorry. Forget it. One of the hazards of the legal profession, I guess. I just went out of my head. I don't know what I was doing. Mr. Barclay, we're going to Mexico. Mexico? Well... Then I'd say the sooner you get started, the better. We'll start packing that wagon right away, tonight. How's that? Mr. Grant, if you're going to Mexico, you're going to need this. What's that for? It's the balance of your rent money. You're a fair man, Mr. Barclay. I'm awful sorry about your head. Hey, Brent. <laughs> Time, Clay. You got the kerosene? Outside on the buckboard. But tell me, are you sure about this? You know that house belongs to the Barclays. What do you care? They got it coming to them for letting them Mormons in. Now let's go. <laughs> Oh, 
this is all foolishness. I really don't see any need of doing all this tonight. Well, you told Mr. Barkley. No. And you took his money. No. Well, you don't want to cause him any more trouble. Well, what trouble can there be tonight? I, I, I mean, wh what's, what's it matter if we wait till, till the morning or the next day, for that matter? Well, you just don't know what might happen. And we've already caused that family enough upset. Now, you promised. I know, but you see, Em... Hebron! All right, all right, all right. I was just... Just making talk don't mean anything. Now... You want to help me with the sideboard, Hebron? Liza, I don't see how we can take that. We can't leave it behind. You just made it special. Well, we have to. We can't take everything. It's going to be a hard enough trip. Is it a long way, Hebron? To Chihuahua? It's a long way. A lot of country in between. Good country, though. Farming and ranching. And all in the United States. With its laws. Now, Em, I wasn't suggesting a thing. Even though we might find places, lonely places, where a body could settle in and never see an outsider from one month to the next. But no, sir, we're, we're going straight to Mexico. Never you fear, I made you promise and I'm going to keep it. How long will it take, Hebron, to get there? About a month, maybe more, depending. On what? Well, on the weather, mostly. It ain't the right time of year for it. One thing we could do with all that time on the road, we can learn some of the language. Don't none of us speak a word of Spanish. How will we learn? Find me one of them books somewhere along the road. I don't know if I can learn, Hebron. I never was much good at foreign tongues. Well, neither am I, but we gotta try. We have to. And, and we will. We, we will. We'll, we'll do just fine. You'll see. Now, don't you worry. We'll, we'll do just, just fine. Yes, but not like here. Well, no, not exactly. It was nice here. But at least we ain't being run out. It's my own decision. Is it? Oh, maybe it'd have been better if I... Now, Em, you hush. This is the way I want it. It's going to be all right. Now, stop your worrying. You just leave all that to Hebron. Like Eliza here does. I'll take good care of you. And God will provide. Sure he will. You just leave everything to Hebron and the Lord. Grant! Grant! Yeah, what do you want? Hebron, you promised. I told you Mormons to get out. You should have listened. You had your chance. We're doing that, can't you see? We're packing to go. No, we ain't budging. I won't be run off. But Hebron, please, you promised. I won't be run off, I tell you. You hear that, blacksmith? We're not budging. Hold it, hold it. None of that now. Oh, please, for God's sake, don't do this. Tell them we're going. Tell them. I can't do that. Don't you see him? I can't do that. I can't be humiliated by swine like that anymore. I won't be run out of my home, out of my country. I won't be. I'd rather die. But you promised. I'm sorry, Emma. I gotta do it. I gotta fight back. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't. They'll kill you. I can't help that. I got to. What are they doing? Father, Lord God of hosts, 
Garrison, I'll need. Smite the sinners! The Lehigh. Part on the well. God of Marilla. Smite the sinners! Got it, Moroni. Save us, I servants. Answered my prayer. Well, Mr. Grant, wagon's all loaded and ready to go. Thank you. Sure, I'm sorry about the farm. Nothing that can't be fixed. The most important thing is you're all still alive. Yes. Well, we'll be leaving then. Have a nice trip. Thank you. Got a lot of work to get done back at the ranch, so good luck to you. Thank you. Jared? Eliza, get on in. Whoops, better not forget this one. Oh, no. That's mine. It stays. Stays? What do you mean, Emelina? I'm not going, Hebrew. What are you talking about? You know we can't stay Not here. Not me. Me. Em, I don't understand. I was right the first time. Um, I'm getting that divorce. Do you know what you're saying? Yes. I'm saying you're not the only man in the world. But I'm your husband. You love me. I did once. I'm not so sure anymore. Somehow you're not the man I thought. Anyway, I'm sure I can get over it. I want the chance to try. But, Em, I love you. I suppose you do, Hebron. In your own way. But, uh... Somehow, that's not enough anymore. But... No. Go with Eliza. Don't you understand, Hebron? I don't love you anymore. Now go. Sister. Goodbye, Eliza. I don't understand this, but I'll miss you. I'll miss you, too. Goodbye, sister. Emelina. Goodbye, Hebron. I don't know what you're doing. You always did have a mind of your own. 
You've always hated it. Well, maybe so, but I loved it, too. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. Mr. Barkley, would you take me to the railroad station? Of course I will. Where are you going to go, Emelina? Back to Utah, I think. I know people there. What about the divorce? There won't be a divorce. But he won't know that, will he? And it'll be all right. Because he won't be breaking any law.